in the early 1940s, people started to understand that the sun can affect the earth in quite profound ways. The problem is that to predict how the sun affects the earth, you need to observe a layer of the sun's atmosphere called the corona, which you normally can't see from earth because the corona is so much dimmer than the surface of the sun. The way around this was to invent something called a coronagraph, which is a telescope that mimics an eclipse in some sense. What became HAO was the place where we had the first ever operating coronagraph. Here at HAO, we do science that goes from the center of the sun all the way into the Earth's atmosphere. And then, because we're part of NCAR, we actually extend that down to the Earth. So we go from the sun to the mud. We study the interior of the sun, the sun's atmosphere, the solar wind, the Earth's magnetic field, and the space environment associated with that, and then also the upper atmosphere of the Earth. The National Center for Atmospheric Research is a federally funded research and development center for the NSF. And what it means to be a national center is that we have to provide services and uh, support for the community. Where I work at the High Altitude Observatory, HAO, uh, we have an observatory, the Mauna Loa Solar Observatory, so we provide observations. This is a, uh, essentially a structure that we can point at the sun. Um, we use this to test our instruments here before we move them out to our observatory in Mauna Loa. The solar atmosphere is, is layered in um, in several shells that, you know, from lower down to higher up are the photosphere, the chromosphere, transition region, and then the corona. The importance of the different layers is the photosphere is basically where all the energy is put into the magnetic field, the chromosphere is where a lot of interesting physics happens, and the corona is uh, very extended and connected into the heliosphere, so it's relevant for space weather and, and um, the near-Earth environment. As we as a society get more reliant on technology, we also are more impacted by solar weather, and that is from the corona. Um, that can disrupt GPS satellites. Uh, it can disrupt the power grid. Um, so predicting when events are going to come that can impact the technology we use is an important uh, piece of the research we do at HAO. So eclipses are very important for studying the sun. Uh, the problem though is that a total solar eclipse only happens on average once every 18 months. So what we do at HAO is try and create a fake eclipse so that we can observe the corona every day. Um, at the moment, most of our instrumentation is in Mauna Loa in Hawaii and we use what's called a coronagraph to do that. A coronagraph mimics an eclipse by having an occulting disk that, um, in front of the sun to act like the moon would. Um, and in that way, we can um, observe the corona. So magnetism is a force to be reckoned with. Magnets are something that occur in nature. So that means that humans have been aware of them for a very long time indeed. The first recorded statement in natural philosophy was, the magnet is alive. So magnets have always had this kind of mystery and magic to them. So of course, magnetic fields are of interest to people who study space science or astrophysics. And by studying the sun, we get such an up-close look at all the things that magnetic fields do in a star that we learn things that are important for topics ranging from black hole accretion disks to exoplanet habitability. COSMO, the Coronal Solar Magnetism Observatory, is our proposed uh, observatory to finally observe the sun's magnetic field from its surface out into its atmosphere, to watch as storms brew and magnetic fields twist and tangle and store energy that is released in these huge explosions. COSMO will be the first observatory with a telescope big enough to make observations of the sun's magnetic field in its atmosphere on a daily basis. In the very near future, uh, an instrument will be deployed here. It's called CROMAG. It's part of the COSMO Observatory. The COSMO Observatory consists of three instruments. Uh, the K-Coronagraph that is uh, currently operational in Mauna Loa, uh, the large coronagraph that uh, Steve Tomczyk is developing and um, uh, working on nowadays, and uh, the chromic instrument, which is close to completion. Uh, it's currently being calibrated in the lab we have 
things that happen uh, very rapidly like flares and CMEs, but also there is continuous motion in the outer solar atmosphere and the chromosphere in particular is very dynamic. Cosmo Observatory you can see things changing on timescales of minutes to seconds. The CMEX is a mission that we've proposed. CMEX is a, uh, a small satellite observatory that will observe the sun in a UV wavelength range that we can't access from the ground. With CMEX, for the first time, we'll be able to diagnose magnetic field in the volume of the solar chromosphere. And that will give us a lot of insight into how energy is built up in uh, magnetic structures that will then lead to flares and CMEs that are geo-effective uh, with space weather effects. So space weather is something that affects us in our modern life. Before, a century ago, it just caused auroras and made beautiful skies for us, but now it can affect our satellites, our internet, all sorts of things. So we need to be able to predict it. And the problem is, without actually knowing what the magnetic fields in the sun's atmosphere are doing, we can't make very good predictions. So the COSMO Observatory is being designed to provide information that will be fundamentally important for improving our ability to predict space weather here at the Earth. If we can predict and monitor space weather, it would look very similar to what's on Earth. So right now, we can just turn on the TV and then we know what the weather is going to be like in our area to pretty good accuracy for the next week or 10 days so then we can plan our everyday lives. There's a lot of impacts from space weather on Earth, for example, taking out um, GPS satellites that we are very dependent on. Um, people who constantly fly towards the poles, for example, pilots and uh, airline crew, they experience a lot of radiation as they get closer to the poles, um, and that becomes important if there's a big storm, that increases your chance of getting cancer. If there's a big storm, it can take down the uh, power lines and our power grid, and then we lose power for a couple of days. So without GPS, without power, that becomes um, a large economic loss. And so similarly, in the space environment, it's the same thing. If we're traveling from here to Mars and we know there's going to be a big solar storm coming in, then we'll know it's going to be dangerous. Um, or shut down your satellites, shut down these instruments that are sensitive to the radiation. And so being able to predict will help us reduce the economic loss and also protect our lives as we become a more spacefaring civilization.